So here I've got a synchro comp or a shutter from an Agfa Carrot. And this one's got a, wee fu a funny wee problem. The shutter blade's absolutely jammed open. I haven't looked inside here yet so I don't know what's going on but I'm sure all will be revealed fairly shortly. Start by unscrewing the front the lens element which is loose. We've got our normal lock screw there to stop the uh, it locks this bayonet ring in place. I'll see if that'll turn with a pair of tweezers. It will, and I can rotate the bayonet and lift that off the front. Can I? No, because the aperture is tied to that lever at that point. Just get that screw off. And put that carefully to one side. Now yeah, we can lift the front ring off. Let's look at the shutter. I can see the shutter blades. I can see the edge of the shutter blades here. All right. See if I can unscrew that rear group. That doesn't want to come. I can get a spanner on there to turn that. I'm going to remove this little bracket. This bracket couples to the range finder on an Agfa Carrot. Let's find the best screwdriver for this job. That screw is very tight. I think that's locked with lacquer. Let me put a little drop of uh, acetone on there. That is really reluctant to unscrew. And it's mate presumably. I'll try some other solvent. Well, that's the first one loose. I had hoped the other one would loosen. Two, but doesn't appear to have. Let's see if I can get this screwdriver in the slot properly. There we go. That's unusually tight. Here we've got a sh shims. Yeah, they're quite interesting. They've been stamped out of something. Um, engineering drawings or something of that nature. And we still haven't got that rear group off. Friction tool first. Friction tool. Yep, that did it. It's a uh, Rodenstock Heligon lens, this one, which would be very much the same as the Heligon lens is fitted to the Retina 2A, for example. It's off with the speed camera. Ring. 
Let's remove the main lever, unhook that spring, that spring. The main lever should lift out, it does. This lever here connects to the blade actuating ring and the lever itself moves. I can see it twitch there but it won't return to the rest position which tells me the blade actuating ring is actually stuck. So problem deep in the shutter. They may just be glued up with oil. I'll strip this thing down. Off with the shutter release. Remove the return spring and the B lever. Remove that screw and the XM sink screw. A lever. Oh, a screw at this end is loose. That's unusual. Lift the cover off. Two brass spacers and hook the spring. That's loose. Off with that. The flash sink. Take the screw out. We lift that off with the contact. There's the one five hundredth of a second speed spring. And the pallet and the little wheel there from the flash sink. Now this component, the flash contact, has the usual screw here, but there's a second screw at this point. So I suspect that second screw will also need to be removed. It looks quite delicate, Stick sitting there on the edge of the shutter housing like that. I imagine they're prone to damage. I can see a bit of a notch underneath there where somebody's levered that up with a screwdriver before, which of course is exactly what I was planning on doing. Lift that off. That's all we need to do to remove from the top of the shutter, flip it over and on the underside three screws from the back hold the mechanism plate and the shutter case together. Now the, shit, the diaphragm blades here look very oily. They do move, but they're very, very oily looking. Not good at all. Split the case. There are our shutter blades. Glued back with oil in the open position. They're just stuck, completely stuck. So the, the problem with this shutter is oil. You can probably see it on the case there. Those shiny patches of oil. And this blade is stuck to the mechanism plate. This is um, one of the oiliest shutters I've seen in a while. So we'll start with the mechanism plate. I'll check to see what the blade actuating ring's like. It does move. It's very lacklustre and sluggish, but it does move. We can remove the lever from the top. Yeah, it's just about stuck in place with oil. 
three, four screws hold the retainer here that holds the blade actuating ring in place. And I can see liquid oil here. I mean, that's, that's just liquid. That's um, a wet patch of oil. It may mean someone squirted some in here. People do things like that from time to time. Yeah, a lot of oil under here. No, it's just a wet patch of it here. Just puddles of it. So all that's oil. Oil is what caused the problem with all of that. And the diaphragm. First I'm going to re remove the setting lever. There's two screws. visible in those cutouts. The blade setting, the setting lever comes off the back. The two screws should come out. One, two. And here you have the shutter case and the diaphragm blades. Three screws, one of them is a countersunk head screw. You can see where it goes, there's an obvious countersunk countersink in the plate where that one goes. Tip out the diaphragm. Well it's so gooey with oil this piece didn't even tip out. This is the moving plate, it's just very oily. There are our diaphragm blades normal for them to lift out in a rosette like that. Um, they're interleaved. These are extremely sticky with oil. I'll spray a bit of solvent on them before I try and separate them um, otherwise I'm in danger of actually damaging something. So these components can all be cleaned now and uh, I'll just clean everything, get all the oil off everything. Um, if I find anything entertaining to show you I will, otherwise you can watch me put it back together again once I've got a stack of fresh clean parts to go. I usually start by reassembling the diaphragm into the shutter case. So we'll start with this piece, this is the retainer for the diaphragm blades and it should be plain side up. One side has got five little tiny dimples in it, that should be down. We've got ten blades. The blades have a rivet at each end which forms the pivot. They are not symmetrical. The rivet closest to the centre of the end of the blade goes down into this fixed plate. The rivet on the other end of the blade is up at this stage. So the blades are just laid out anti-clockwise like this. These blades are fairly flat uh, when they've been distorted which is usually caused by the aperture settings being forced when the diaphragm blades are gummed up with oil then they can bow up, they can bow up in the middle they don't lie flat and it can be very awkward to reassemble their diaphragm. So as I get round to the beginning here I've got to pull back the earlier blades 
to allow me to get my blades in place and obviously I have to be careful not to pull those blades out of their pivot points otherwise I'll be starting the process again This is the last blade. Now I have to swing the earlier blades back and over the top of that without disturbing anything. And then the moving ring goes on. One side of this ring, the two screw holes here are for the screws that go through to the setting lever. They go down on the jig. This has to be aligned in the correct position. And the correct position in this case is here. where this tag, brass tab here is just across from this there are two screw holes here fairly close together this one's just across from it now I've got to get this settled over the blade rivets or pivots and they're all in bar one there I'm just pulling that into line This one here is just making a break for it. Let's just pop that back into place. So there I have all my pivots in the slots. Now I can lower the case over the top. There's a number of holes in this case, but the ones we're interested in are this one, this one, and this one. They're the screw holes that the, the screws fixing this to fit to. So if I can line those up, we'll be good to go. Somewhere about there. I'll flip my jig over, lift the outside piece off, prop it back underneath to support it, and just align that uh, retainer plate correctly with the holes. And there were three screws holding that, one of them was a countersunk head screw and looking here I can see that that's this one let's run that screw down, don't tighten it up two more screws It's awkward doing this so I can see it and you can see it at the same time. Run that screw down lightly. I can lift that off now. Nothing's going to fall to bits. And the third screw goes over here. Do that screw up very lightly. Now check, I'm checking here to make sure that the rivets, the pivots, are in their sockets all the way around. They appear to be good. So I'll check what happens when I move the setting ring here. That the diaphragm is round and the action is smooth. No blades are left behind. That looks good. So I can tighten up the three screws.
and check again and that action is smooth. Some discoloration on the blades here, I'm not surprised by that. In fact, I'm surprised they came out as clean as they did. That won't cause us any problem. So the setting lever. The setting lever go only goes one way up. The setting lever is normally at the bottom of the shutter. And the cutouts at the top here are normally at the top of the shutter. So supporting this from underneath, line up the setting lever with the holes in this plate and through the moving plate. And there are two screws of course, shoulder screws that go through there. Get one started. get the other one started. And do both of those screws up. Normally I support the ring from the underside on the edge of the block while I'm doing that up. Get that screw up. Check that screws down up. Okay, so now we've got our setting lever in place and I can really check the feel of that to make sure that it's smooth. Um, absolutely no problem there, that's good. You don't want the thing to flop about of course because you don't want the set aperture changing while you, when you didn't intend to do so. So that's that part done. And the next thing to do is turn my attention to the mechanism plate. And the mechanism plate's been all cleaned. And I've also flushed out the uh, retard gear train. Let's put this on the block of wood that I normally work on. So here we've got the blade actuating ring. There's a pin sticking upwards on that blade actuating ring runs through that hole there. And this is held in with this retainer which only fits on one way and it's not hard to see how that fits. And this is held in place with four screws. Now three of the screws are short in this case. One of them is long. And the long one goes over here. I'll flip this over when we're done and you can see where they went to. Just put them in one at a time. Don't tighten them up until you have the last one in place. And you can tighten them up. The reason three of these screws are short is that otherwise they would interfere with the mechanism. The screw's busy trying to get away there. Come on back. These screws have a little bit of uh, red lacquer on them which was used to seal them in place originally whether it was a just a lacquer or whether it was something in the that worked like Loctite I don't know now I have all the screws in place I'll tighten them up We'll flip this over. I'll zoom you in a little bit. That'll do. You can see one of the screws here in this slot, and you can probably see that that's got to it's got to be below the level of that slot so it doesn't cause any problems. Likewise, one of the screws is visible here. Again, it's got to be below the level of that section there. 
and the third is over at this point here. And that one there, looking at that, that, that could have been a long screw too, it wouldn't have been a problem. The fourth one is here at the corner. Again, that's, um, that's out of the way of everything there and shouldn't cause a problem. So I'm just checking the movement of the blade actuating ring. That appears to be fine. I'll zoom back out. That's nice and smooth in action. And the next component to go on here is the control lever which sits at this point. Normally this control lever I just lubricate very lightly at the pivot and at the slot where it couples to the pin on this arm. It's always worth checking that the head of the screw hasn't got some corrosion or other lump of crud underneath it that might cause problems. Do that up. Check the action again. Check that this moves smoothly. It appears to. Thread of cotton here I want to see the back of. Put the spring in place that returns it. And I'll check the action. Just checking that that's a nice snappy action. No problem there, that's all good. So the mechanism plate here is virtually ready to have the shutter blades installed. First I like to lubricate this with some graphite powder before I go any further. So I'll show you how I do that. Alright, taking some graphite powder Knock a bit into the mechanism plate there between the mechanism plate and the blade actuating ring. I was working that backwards and forwards to distribute that graphite powder on the working surfaces. And it doesn't need any more than that. And I'll blow out the excess. Well, before I do that, I'll lubricate the uh, retard gear train in the same way. Top bit of graphite powder on there. Hold back the pallets here with my finger and then work the lever at the other end. Okay. I'm doing is applying this to the teeth really of the gears really just so that the I'm sure that the gear teeth will roll over each other with minimum of friction. They should anyway but tiny little gear teeth like that if they get a little bit of surface corrosion or roughness on them, a bit of oxidization they often don't roll over each other as smoothly as they should. 